And we're back with another episode. Um, we've been kind of busy lately. Yeah, sorry. Last week was, uh, I think, the first week that we missed an episode since it we is. started doing this. Feel bad about that, but we legitimately just we didn't have time. Yeah. We went to L.A. during the weekend, then we had a very busy week. I was super stressed. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot that's happened since then. Like, there's basically like world war three mm-hmm. hyperinflation not technically hyperinflation but very high gas well, prices close to it, yeah uh the travesty with kane velasquez lots of ufc fights but we'll touch on all that kim and kanye still breaking up she dropped her last name so now she's just kim kardashian she dropped the west oh wow it's kind of funny because her beauty line is kkw kim kardashian west so but i wow. heard that she could rebrand it. She could rebrand it. And I think she kind of needs to because they were saying like rumors that it was like going like going under. But maybe they were just trying to rebrand. Why would it be going under? Can't compete with Kylie. Kylie's Queen uh, B when it comes yeah, to that. Yeah. I mean, she, what, how, what does she need? She doesn't need to do anything. Mm. Just relax. She likes to. Yeah. She's a motivational entrepreneur for, for us women. Yeah, she is for sure. Boss babe. But uh, it's a good wrestling this weekend too. Oh, and while we were gone, uh, we had the most amazing uh, dog sitter, Zane. Thank you. Thank you. Um, how was that? It was a little, was that like too much responsibility? I don't think so. Pablo's great. You know, me and Pablo have a special bond. I was worried about asking you because I was thinking like, he's just going to say yes because he feels bad. And I didn't want you to feel obligated to say yes. But also we really needed you. And if you didn't, Pablo would have been like... Like shit out of luck. I was just thinking about Pablo the entire time. What if Zane moves in and he could be Pablo's au pair? Oh, that's a good idea. Pablo's au pair? Do you want to be an au pair? <sighs> you know. <laughs> Do you know any other languages? Uh, I can speak a little bit of French. Yeah. We okay. Need, perfect. We need someone that can speak another language because mm-hmm. I want him to be a little more well-rounded. Yeah. Are you familiar with what is it like the monastery way of teaching? Like gentle parenting. Uh, yeah. Gentle parenting. Gentle parenting. Is that's, like what, a thing? that's what we do for Pablo. Okay. I, I feel like I can maybe handle that. Yeah. Yeah. So you were taking him, got him puppuccinos and Shake Shack. Yeah, yeah. I took him on a walk every day. You know, we need to get his window. He's so fast. Yeah, it's pretty People quick. have no idea how, like, what his top speed's at. It's fast. He's really fast. Anytime I take him to the dog park, like, it's like when he goes, it's like almost annoying because people won't stop talking mm-hmm. about how fast he is. And sometimes I like don't want to talk to people there. And everyone's like, oh, my God, I didn't know they could be. They were that fast. I'm like, they're not. But he is. He's a special one. He gave me shin splints. Well, he's so explosive. Yeah. He's just all muscle. Mm-hmm. But that's why his cardio sucks. At the end of one walk, I had to carry him back. Literally? Literally. Would he just Because he just like wasn't. He, he was done. Yeah. He gave me all he had. Wow. 110%. Yeah. As a coach, that's the he most I could ask his, for he my went out on his shield. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. But uh yeah, we appreciate you watching him. We, of course. It was sad. I didn't know what we were gonna do with him, but he was in good hands. So we appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Zane. No problem. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about before we get into everything was uh this past weekend we don't usually talk about like local sports, but uh there was the New York State Wrestling Championships and I just was so inspired by it it was an incredible story um from a long beach wrestler his name is and i hope i don't pronounce it wrong but dunia simbumana and his story is absolutely insane yeah when you you and gregor told me about him i was like surprised that i haven't heard that before but he's still very young well he's only an eighth grader and he just won the new york state championships he Mm -hmm. dominated every single person in the tournament he had a pin in the finals um but his story is he came to this country from africa where he was attacked by chimpanzees in the jungle of the congo Mm -hmm. and uh his brother and another relative and him were in the jungle and they were attacked by the chimpanzees and he had like horrible facial injuries and his brother and his other relative died but he just had like you know just devastating facial injuries then he came to this country for like the surgery and And stony brook stony brook uh yeah children's Hospital. hospital 
they did uh, all the surgeries. It was like a bunch of different surgeries, but the, you know, so they helped him. But then he was adopted by the Long Beach wrestling coach, and who's a, who's an amazing coach. He has state champions all the time, and it's like a historic program on Long Island. But this kid is an eighth grader and just won it. It's what an amazing story. Like I feel like that should be a movie already, and he's only in eighth grade. It's but so crazy. He's a legit wrestler, like super athletic, then really technical. And it's just such an amazing story. Yeah, we watched like the little documentary about him and I was like bawling my eyes out. Yeah, I was like getting choked up. Yeah. And then um I thought like the sweetest part about it was when they asked him like what what he liked about wrestling, like why he got started. And he's like, oh, I just liked it because I and then I wanted to train. I wanted to get tougher and better. And it's like for someone like that young to go through that and come out and like you're pretty tough <laughs> i i think i think you've been through stuff that's like tougher than what wrestling but i don't know it's just really cool to to see and i, I was um you know talking to you about it and i said hopefully we're gonna try to like reach out we'll see maybe him uh we would love to have him and his dad on the podcast to talk to them about it They're yeah like, both of them that would be amazing you know, since they're local and it's just such a good story yeah yeah it's super inspiring really inspiring it makes you like like you know, all like I know I'm in the UFC and all the fighters and stuff that like complain about, you know, COVID, getting COVID before a fight, getting a staff infection during fight camp or little stuff like that. It's just like, wow, you guys are like nowhere near as tough as this kid. Yeah, it's amazing. But good for him. Very happy for him. Um, then last weekend we were in L.A. What did you think about that? That was a cool experience. Yeah. Um, so we stayed in Glendale. Um, I had never been there and, uh, you know, I didn't really know anything. It's about 25 minutes outside of, uh, outside of, uh, Los Angeles. And it's basically like little Armenia, which was a cool, I've always known that. And I've always wanted to go visit there because of that. We got to, we went to Rafi's, which is like a super popular Armenian restaurant. And, um, it was just crazy. Like during the day when we were walking around the shops, just seeing, not like you know there's a lot of Armenian people, but it felt like you were in Armenia. Like yeah, no one speaking English, walking around like the outdoor mall type thing. It it was it was pretty insane. So that was cool to experience. And how beautiful was Glendale? It was crazy. It's it's right next to LA, like twenty minutes away. And it really is the tale of two cities. Like in LA, under every bridge and all over the street, all you see is like garbage and homeless people and it's like most of it's disgusting. But Glendale, I mean, there's not a cigarette butt on the floor. It was like, looked like they like broom sweep the sidewalks. There was no garbage, no nothing. It was such a, like a beautiful place. And I was confused. I was like, how can LA be so terrible and one town over be amazing? You didn't see one homeless person. Yeah. Nothing. It was like and, so clean. And we asked um, the people who hosted, hosted, brought us out. And they said that Glendale is considered a, like a private city. They have their own police department and their own like very conservative like government. And it's like the ultimate tale of two cities. Of course, it's much smaller than L.A. Right. But it's just incredible how like gorgeous it is. Beautiful, clean. Everyone's so nice. And Business then, like, is booming. You start driving like 15 minutes. and you're, It was weird because we went there first and I'm like, it's crazy. I haven't seen like any homeless person. Yeah. I was expecting to see that. And then we took an Uber. We went into to West Hollywood. Yeah. And then I went as soon as we started driving, I'm like, oh, OK, I see the the shift like that. It's just so crazy. Yeah. Wild. But it just goes to show like it's not like geographic, like, oh, well, it's warm. So all the homeless people go there. It's just the same. It's just different policies. Right. And whatever Glendale's doing right. If they could just shift that into L.A., it would be, be like, so the best place ever. Right. Yeah, it was it was good. Uh, we went for Armhoff. It was a is an organization. They did um an Armenian for a fundraiser for Armenian sports, and uh, they did a whole fundraiser. They did a Hall of Fame uh, for different different Armenian people that were involved in sports. This was the inaugural class, the mm -hmm. first Armenian Athletic Hall of Fame. So they had a bunch of people from like the seventies and you know all over. Like there was a coach from Notre Dame got inducted. Mm -hmm you know, a, a football player for the Dolphins. So it was quite a list. But I was thinking, I was like, well, why aren't you inducted? But I'm assuming you have to be retired from your sport. Yeah. Right. Maybe. But someday you will be. Hopefully. That would yeah, be cool. Hopefully. Um, but yeah, it was a cool event too. And it's like, for me, um, 
you know, I'm Armenian, but I didn't really know any Armenian people growing up. And like I grew up in Quaker Town, Pennsylvania. It's not very many, although it's right outside of Philly. There's a lot of in Philadelphia, but um, any major city. Right. But uh, yeah, it was just so cool to be like around like that many Armenian people and just kind of like learn but more. They about think of each other as like brother and sister. Mm-hmm. Like they they were they think of you like as like a sister. Yeah. They're I, so supportive and so much like love in that community. It's incredible. Yeah. Since fighting in, in the UFC, I've definitely embraced more of like my Armenian culture only because too, you know, growing up, I didn't really know that much about my grandfather's uh, from Armenia and grew up but like hearing stuff from him. But, uh, you know, no, not anyone else that I'm around had any experience. But as soon as I got in the, into the UFC, I remember after my first fight, I posted a picture of like me winning is like won my first fight. So excited, whatever. And all of a sudden, all the comments were like Armenian flags and hearts. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. And Armenians are there's not that many of them in in the world. So they are very so tight, so tight. Like as soon as someone meets someone, they see their last names are like Armenian. They right away. They're like, oh, you're Armenian. And they just kind of like glue together right away. Yeah. And um, so like ever since being in the UFC, it's crazy. Like. You know, sometimes people are like, oh, why do you hold the Armenian flag? Like, you're technically, he's like, you're American. I was like, well, Americans aren't always that nice to me as far as my fans. I was like, our Armenian fans are the nicest people and they're just so supportive. So, you know, and every time I see any Armenian people, like, you holding that flag means so much to all of us. 10 different people say that at that event. Yeah. People say that to me all the time. Who who wouldn't even notice that? Exactly. So it makes me like want to keep, you know, keep. You know, me holding a flag brings them so much joy and happiness, and that's the least I could do to, like, you know, give back yeah. because they're so supportive of me. It's funny, though, because there was, like, a couple different Olympic champions there. There's two different Armenian Olympic champion wrestlers mm-hmm. there, and then there's, you know, a bunch of, like, fighters and jiu-jitsu people, judo people. But we were sitting at the table, and it was all, like, you could tell, like, rough, rough dudes, mm-hmm. like, rough, like, you Armenian felt safe fighters. There. Well, the, the, the one guy said to me, he was like, he's like, take care of our sister. <laughs> Make sure you take care of our sister. And I was like, okay, okay. I will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, I didn't want to. Yeah, they definitely, they were saying, they're like, oh, we definitely don't like, need. He's uh... not Armenian? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, like, kind. Oh. And then you were like, my my uh, brother did a DNA test and we ha- are a little bit of Armenian. Yeah, my brother did do a DNA test and said it was like uh, 2% or something. Yeah. Made sure they yeah. knew that. That was the next highest thing. Yeah. So okay. technically I am. Yeah. But yeah, so that was a really fun, cool event. Um, then one event that's happened throughout the week that's just devastating. Um, well, there's Ukraine, which is devastating, but the Cain Velasquez situation. Yeah. Uh, that to me is like just an absolutely heartbreaking story. It's so crazy. I mean, it's been a couple of days, maybe even like a week since I first heard about it, but you just still can't. Like, I wonder what's going to happen. Well, today is uh, Mar- Tuesday, March 7th, and I just saw that he had his uh, first appearance in front of the judge, and they denied bail. Mm-hmm. So he's not getting bail. It's too, the judge said it was, he's too much of a risk, something like that. So he now has to return to jail mm-hmm. until, I believe it's April 12th, before he go- has his first hearing. Wow. But it's just awful. Because what's happening is he allegedly uh, shot at a vehicle that had a person in the vehicle, a passenger, I believe, who molested his daughter like hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. So he allegedly went after him and ended up striking someone, obviously. Everyone knows the story, but hit shot at someone, hit someone in the arm. And then he was just arrested without incident. You know? Yeah, the guy's 40 years old and he was in the car with his parents who owned the daycare that his daughter went to. And this guy, this 40 year old guy was living at his parents house. Sounds like a real cool guy and was molesting his, his four year old daughter. Yeah, his daughter. So I guess he went and I think and obviously this is I read stuff, so I don't know how accurate it is. But I think that guy got arrested and then got out on bail and his parents picked him up yes. from jail. And then that's when Kane started chasing him in the car. And then he went to try to shoot him, but he shot the dad. And now yes. that's what it is. Because so, I think a lot of people are very confused, though. I will say 
anytime I see anyone talk, post anything about it, they're like, the guy deserved it. I'm like, I know, but, and I agree 100%, but he didn't shoot the guy. Like, I think a lot of people don't realize that. Well, he shot, he, it was accidentally shot the other guy. Yeah, I think a lot of people just mm. think he shot the the guy that molested his daughter. But he didn't. He missed and shot someone else. Yeah. So that's a, I mean, you shot someone that didn't, may, maybe, you don't know. Right. I mean, obviously, maybe. Well, ob- I mean, maybe he didn't, like, a lot of people are saying that, Oh, Kane did this. Kane did this. These are allegations. Right. Like he might not have done anything. Yeah. He might not have even been there. Mm-hmm. You know, you never know. But um, one of the questions that we got this week was to me. They said, "If you were Kane's lawyer, how would you defend him?" And I'm not a lawyer, but I do know a decent amount bit about the legal system. Mm-hmm. And I'm awful. I don't understand anything. About and that. I've always wanted to be a lawyer. I kind of like fantasize, uh, like fancy myself as a lawyer, like yeah. even with contracts and mm-hmm. in real estate. I like like the legal end of things. But um, if I was Kane's lawyer, it, it's just there's not necessarily. And this is there, he may not have even been there, maybe as an alibi and was like, I was in Texas. Here's my, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the, the proof. I was in this hotel in Dallas. So you never know. That could be. But let's say that's not the case. Let's say he was there. They caught him red handed. Mm-hmm. Um, what really matters in a case like that isn't so much of like a defense, but a jury selection. Mm. Because you have to go and if it goes to trial, it goes in front of a jury of 12, you know, regular people, jury of your right. peers. So the prosecution gets to select some. The defense gets to select some. And, you know, you could object and cancel each other out. But, you know, if you, if if Kane's lawyers can get even one like father, mm-hmm. you know, one person, you would think they would just side with Kane and be like, not guilty. They don't I don't need to know anything else. Right. He's trying to, kill, uh, you know, protect his daughter. Yeah. So the only thing that matters in a case like that is jury selection. So. Of course, he's going to have amazing lawyers, and I think that they'll. The prosecution. But how did the jury members get selected? Random. Random. Okay. Random. So they're just hoping that someone. Well, they'll send out like a hundred ballots. Mm-hmm. Like then like, they come in, and then they they'll summon a hundred ball- jurors. Right. Then they pick down to twelve. It's a big process. I've never done it. Been Have you ever had jury duty? No, yeah. I haven't. But the prosecutor they don't like to lose cases that's why a lot of times they'll plea things down Mm -hmm. so i'm thinking that maybe they'll throw out like a lot of the charges because they know that if it goes to a trial here's this like beloved you know celebrity who is protecting his four-year-old daughter yeah there's a big good chance that you're gonna have people side with him of course right so I think I could see the prosecution just say, we'll drop all charges, but you're going to, except for reckless, reckless endangerment, because you, rec- you know, mm-hmm. recklessly shot at a vehicle, whatever, put people's lives, and you could plead guilty to that and, you know, give you a year of probation or five years probation. He's never been in trouble, so that doesn't matter. Right. But I can't imagine that it's going to go to a trial where a jury's involved like if it was a bench trial Mm -hmm. with just the judge right which the if you the you could ask for a bench trial but in this case you would never do it you want the jury but if it was a bench trial then i'd be like well yeah he's probably going to get convicted of everything but if he could get a jury trial well he will get a jury trial with the right selection i think that there's a chance to get off yeah yeah, I mean, I think so. All you need is one person to say not guilty, one out of 12. But it's a horrible process he's going to have to deal with for a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, that type, that whole process of it even just getting to, that's going to take so, and in the meantime, he's obviously in jail till then. Not necessarily. The next hearing, they could maybe get Change him out, it. Okay. possibly. But yeah, it's just an awful, awful, awful situation. He's um like, I know him. I don't know him really well. But any he's anyone who's ever met him, he's like the You've nicest. Trained with him. I've trained with him. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's like the nicest, like best guy. You know, he's like the captain of their team. He's like an amazing father. Mm-hmm. You know, just such a good guy. It's it was just when I read about that, I was really upset. Obviously, whenever you hear about a kid being molested, it's upsetting. Oh my god, it's insane. But 
then when like you could just imagine the emotions that he was going through and it was just just an awful just terrible situation they said that um you know they're doing investigation on the daycare to see if any if if she was only victim if there's sure other she wasn't. yeah and they said that like people were already coming forward and saying that there was other right you know it hasn't been like confirmed but there was already people right so that's what i mean like the jury will be from that community yeah so if you're a father or you know you probably know someone that went there or you, you don't know. even need to be a father I, i'm not a father yeah we don't have kids but and that's it's still like, like heartbreaking yeah. to me but yeah yeah so that, that's that's terrible i think i saw in like I think it was Derek Brunson's Instagram or something. He was doing selling the shirts that yeah. say free cane. I think they were like thirty dollars each and it goes towards um like the proceeds go towards towards him for all these, yeah, yeah. these legal fees that he, and all he that already stuff. Raised like over ten thousand dollars for him. But yeah, I'm sure he's gonna get a lot of support, obviously. Yeah. Well you see like all the people outside of the Yeah. I think it was like outside of the jail courthouse, courthouse yeah. yeah like all like basically doing a parade to yeah. support him. Yeah, that's cool. His GoFundMe got canceled. I it saw did? that. Yeah. yeah. They wow. have to restructure it, I guess. You can't put it for legal defense. Yes, I think so. Okay. So, so I, I think they could do it maybe for his family, like say like perhaps, but just sad that all that money they raised from is gone now. So wait, well, how That's did... not Derek Brunson's though. That's GoFundMe. Let's go fund me, yes. Yeah. So how does that happen then when if people already donated it, say it got like, you know, just say ten thousand and then they take it down, do those people get the money back? I'm assuming they get it refunded. I'm gonna well, keep who knows? searching into it. But yeah. if it isn't refunded, that's very scary. Well, sometimes they just take it and donate it to a different charity. That's what happened with, with the, the truckers. truckers. Yeah. 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 That's so so how could GoFundMe exist? If you ever did that one time, how can it still exist? I feel like after that, I'm like, I wouldn't Why would you ever donate use to it? there because especially, you know, I hate GoFundMe's more than anything. I think that they're just awful. I hate and that. they Yeah, exist. that's probably your biggest pet peeve. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. But if Kane Velasquez had one that was up, I would donate to that one. That's a worth, yeah. worthy cause. But you can't donate to it. It doesn't exist. Right. Well, you could buy a T-shirt. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's get into the fights this weekend. Mm -hmm. UFC 272. Really good. What'd you think? I thought it was good. We stayed up for the whole entire card. It was a late one. Yeah. Uh, we'll mostly talk about the main card, but on the undercard, um, Marina, uh, Morose, mm -hmm. she was the most impressive on the undercard, I thought. And she just happened to be from Ukraine. Yeah. So she looked really good. She had really good grappling. Um, and she was an control. underdog. Yeah. Like almost a two to one underdog. She's been in the, I think she's not like super popular, but she's been in the UFC for a long time. A couple of years, she used to fight at 115 and now, and then her last couple of fights are at, up at flyweight. Yeah, she looked great. But then afterwards, just when she was talking. I, I lost it. I cry. It doesn't take much for me to start crying when right. I watch things, but, but her like, interview, I, I start crying right away. They're like, it must have been hard trying to focus with knowing that your family's in Ukraine. She's like, I don't want the Russians to kill my family. That's yeah, she, she started like, crying oh and God. she's like, I'm, I've been so scared this whole time. I can't imagine like going into the pressures of fight week and then going into in that type of situation but she, you know she probably has no choice that's her job of course yeah you know you can't just stop but she was um off for a while cuz she was in Ukraine during covid and had trouble getting she trains at ATT instead she had trouble getting here during covid then fi so that took time off of fighting for her and then she finally got here and then this now it's just it's so sad. I can't yeah. imagine. Like right now, it's so fresh too. She yeah. said she has family there, and she's so but scared. You know, she's got, gets to present Ukraine in a good light and make money. She got a submission or a bonus mm -hmm. performance bonus. So that's really. She good. looked really great. Yeah, she, no, she looked super she looked well rounded. Great, great yeah, grappling. Really, really good. But the whole crowd was like cheering for her like crazy as soon as they announced that she was like from Ukraine. Of course they were, but then. I know there was a couple of Russians on the early prelims, like Khabib's cousin. Mm -hmm. And then I heard when they said something about Russia and then the crowd was booing them. Right. And I actually felt really bad for them Yeah, because I would imagine that most Russians don't agree with what's happening and it puts them in a bad light. It's funny you say that my, um, my roommate from college, she's from Moscow. She lives in New York City. since, since college, she's lived in New York city, got a job there. And I saw like, a couple of weeks ago that she went back to Russia was like visiting family and I had posted like something 
something about like, I don't know, something, some meme about Ukraine and that whole thing. And she was like, it's so crazy here. And I was talking to her and she's in Moscow right now. I was like, when are you coming back? And she's like, well, I don't know now because I need to renew my visa and the U.S. Um, embassy in Russia is shut, shut down. down. So she has to try to get to Europe. But I heard that like all the flights like going out of it, out yeah. of there are like $5,000 a flight if you can get one to get out. And she was saying, she goes, my Facebook and Twitter haven't worked in five days. And this was like a week ago. She goes, they haven't worked in five days. My Instagram is in and out. She goes, but it'll probably only be a couple of days before that goes out. She goes, it's so horrible. Her parents like, I don't know what they do, but they own business. She goes, my parents are so screwed economically. And she's like, it's so bad. She goes, and then ev- she goes, we just feel like everyone in the whole entire world hates all well, Russians. That, that's so sad to, for me. Yeah. That because like most of the just regular Russian citizens, I'm sure that they don't want to be going to war. No. Like they don't want that. Nobody wants that. And then everyone's, but everyone's like, like hard on them. Like, boo, like it's really like lumping everything into one. You yeah. Should, you can't do that. Yeah. And she was saying, she goes, it just sucks. Like everyone thinks like she'd almost like not want to go to Europe, somewhere in Europe to go to the embassy because she's like, like fearful because everyone hates Russians. And she's like, she doesn't want to go be at war like people there. And it, it's kind of it's crazy because everyone's like, you know, obviously sides with Ukraine. And then like the people in Russia are like getting booed at the fight, they and feeling, they feel, feeling fearful and like they, they didn't, didn't do anything. Do anything. They said now like they don't even um in Russia, the people are like struggling to get diapers for babies because no one's sending anything oh, in. Yeah, yeah. So, well, like, sanctions. Right? Yeah. So they said that like they don't even have like diapers for babies there. It's so, you know, it's so wild. Yeah, that is. We're wild. like so lucky that we see that on the news but we don't really understand it or yeah, experience it's, it's that crazy crazy did you guys hear what happened at the olympics mm-hmm. uh no so there's a russian gymnast uh, is this the winter olympic is this yeah oh. so what's happening right now so i'm gonna butcher his name ivan kuliak is a 20 year old russian gymnast and when he went to go on the podium we'll take a gymnast the, the Oli- olympic gymnast yes the olympic is that's summer olympics uh it no, was world championship winter right now yeah i know but, but gymna- gymnastics, gymnastics is not in the winter olympics podium saturday hold up let me see what's going on here maybe he's like a maybe the world championships or something mm, uh, uh yeah world cup world okay. cup yeah so the world cup um backtrack <laughs> <laughs> so he placed bronze and um as he goes on to the podium he has a white z on its chest and in russian that symbolizes uh invasion uh, so he's getting a lot of flack for that right now wait i don't get it so he's basically like admitting that he's pro-invasion of Ukraine. okay so oh. he's okay yeah so, wow that's pretty like intense who, who interpreted that that like that's well i guess uh, someone from russia probably. the z maybe it's like a while it's yeah, obviously a, a white z thing. is like uh a interpretation of people. invasion well, yeah, Damn. obviously there's some people probably who are for it, but I think the, to lump them all Russian people right. into, you know, the enemy is ridiculous. And then you don't realize the stuff that they're going through because you can't feel oh bad because no one yeah. feels bad for any of them because it's like, of course, you know. I've seen a couple of funny memes, though, like they're talking about like World War Three, and they're like, well, uh, if it, they should just send, draft the unvaccinated, send all the unvaccinated, mm-hmm. if they have to send draft, and then <laughs> someone's like, they're not allowed in the military. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so funny. I saw someone else post. They're like, everyone's like in the U.S. is so supportive of the people from Ukraine. They're like, you were more supportive of the people of Ukraine than you were for your own neighbors and family well, members. Course. And then they go, just so you know, only 30 percent of of Ukrainian people are vaccinated. <laughs> I saw that, too. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Just so you know. I could like go on memes for both sides all the time and just all day. It's so yeah, funny. They're amazing. Yeah, it's such a it's such a I always a think meme. I'm like, I love it, but I don't how do people have the creativity to think of that? I think of memes a lot. I just don't have the technology to like make them. Make I should him. send my ideas to Zane. You could probably put together memes. I always think of things that would be good <laughs> memes. Like- We're about to become a meme page. <laughs> but uh yeah, so the main card <laughs> UFC two seventy two is Sergey uh Spivak. And uh, Greg Hardy, uh, your boy Greg Hardy. Ugh. But uh, every time he fights, I want what happened to him in this fight. That's what I want to happen. But he like 
I get like it ruins my night when I'm when he fights and he wins. I'm like, well, he oh. hasn't won in a while. Yeah, but uh, he <laughs> got dominated. It was like uh, Sergey threw like um like a really sick like judo throw, threw him right to his back, and then lost uh, him. The other thing that was in that fight that I saw, then he was Greg Hardy went to almost like turtle or all fours, and Sergey just ran like an old school college wrestling scholastic wrestling half Nelson mm -hmm. like under the arm on the head and just ran a half Nelson and he went right over to his back and then he you know obviously got finished but it was just uh, you don't really see like that the half cool. Nelson used in fights well I'm sure there's, Greg there's Hardy that. hasn't trained a whole lot it's right like, but you it know. was just very funny like a, like a third grade half Nelson a wrist and a half and he just right. ran him over to the, yeah. put, it, got, put him on his back you said you heard he was like 300 pounds before the fight yeah greg hardy came into fight week 300. came into the fight so that's tuesday and on 35 pounds so from but. tuesday to friday morning 35 pounds that's crazy yeah. i mean it's crazy I, mean, I think 300 just sounds it sounds sounds crazy. insane but um but yeah i mean people at like that are 100 pounds lighter than him are cutting 25 right. pounds well you so, are I mean, yeah. you're doing 15 you're 150 pounds less yeah right? yeah you're more yeah yeah but um, so that was Greg Hardy's third loss in a row, and I think it was his last fight on his contract. I would say he's probably done. Yeah. Because I think he gets paid decent. Yeah. But who do who could you match him up with? Yeah, I mean, probably be good for like PFL or yeah Bellator. But I would say he's probably done. Yeah, done then, so. Uh, bye -bye. Kevin Holland came down, came back. He fought at uh, one seventy. I love Kevin time. Holland. Yeah, you do. And he fought uh, Alex uh, Oliveira, mm -hmm. Brazilian cowboy. And that first round, I thought, was, like, amazing. Yeah. It was one of the, probably the best round of the night, I thought. Most competitive back and forth. Yeah. Um, he looked like he was going to out-grapple him. He took him down. He took his back. He had, like, a rear naked choke locked mm -hmm. in as time expired. Um, but then Holland landed a beautiful combination and finished him early in the second round. I don't know. Like, I feel like. It's just tough because he needs specific style matchups, I think. There's yeah. lots of guys he could beat. He can beat. There's lots of guys he can beat and, perform, and put on like a, you know, an entertaining performance. But then when he goes to the next level, he can't really compete with them. Yeah. I'd like to. I don't know who, who he could fight next. Um, I'd like to see him fight Randy Brown. Oh, that's a good fight. They're I think that's weight. a fun fight. Yeah. Because although Randy is pretty good grappling. Yeah. He's got good jujitsu. He has good some, at everything. a few finishes. He's not necessarily a takedown guy, but uh, his striking is like real explosive, just like mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Holland's. I would like to see that matchup. I think that would be a fun fight. Yeah, I like that. But, um, yeah, I think. I mean, but I think that's a better weight class for him. I want him to do well, but uh, it's just it's always different when they move to a new weight class because mm -hmm. the same problems are still there. Like there's wrestlers at one seventy. You just too. might if you run out of the favorable matchups. Then maybe you switch to the weight class just to get a couple more favorable matchups. Even though it's like a right. heavier weight class, you might have some success for a few fights, but I don't think overall. Yeah. And then uh, Edson Barbosa and Bryce Mitchell. Great fight. I this mean, was a fight was I was not a great fight. I thought it was just like an ass kicking. Well, exciting, I guess. Exciting. I don't know. Yeah. But when I say great fight, I don't mean like yeah, how not competitive. competitive. No, it is, but like I was. This is the fight on the card that I was most excited about. Me too. I didn't really know, you know what I mean? When I went, I was like, okay, well, this fight, you'll see how good Bryce Mitchell is. Because yeah. I, I was super hyped on him. Everyone was. But, like, you don't know until you get to a, You have to fight a certain person to, to be like, okay, you're legit yeah. where you can keep going. And he definitely showed that. I mean, Edson's really good. And you really can't. If, and he, he dropped him. Yeah. His first real exchange mm -hmm. was he dropped him with a straight left, and then Edson kind of scrambled back to his feet. Then he took him down, and it was pretty much over. But uh, that was the story of the fight. But his striking is definitely pretty good. Yeah. You know? He has uh, good striking, good power. Obviously, like, in, like for his style. And for his style, he needs that cardio, and he has that. Yeah. So, you know, being able to just take Edson down that easily and not yeah. worry about the kicks... It's just Super so impressive. amazing to me because I, I started following him and like looking at how he trains and how he lives and stuff. It's always so amazing to me when he, someone like this is so rare. Someone who trains at like he trains basically in his like garage mm -hmm. and he like brings in like a couple coaches in his like local community and like rural Arkansas. And 
but it's he doesn't want to do anything else he doesn't yeah. want to i mean he could go anywhere anyone would love to have him mm-hmm. but uh he's kind of like figuring it out it looks like he could beat anyone to me yeah I, there's I'm, no one who i'd be like oh i can't beat uh you know max holloway will beat him up i mean no, i don't think so yeah i'm a huge fan i i was before and then uh during my fight week he was there doing like appearances and stuff and i and i met him and talked to him real quick and he was like, the sweetest nicest person i've like ever met he seems like a nice he person. was so nice he was just sitting i went to do like cardio early in the morning one day and he was just sitting in the hotel lobby even like a flannel shirt overalls and boots by himself and i like just started i went up to him and just talking to him he was so nice yeah he was like you know what i mean and so i'm like oh, i was a fa- i love when i'm like a fan of a fighter and then i meet them and they're and i like them even more yeah that's cool now i think edson was ranked 10th so he's going to be probably top 10 what about I'd him like and dan see, Ige? that's exactly what i was gonna did you already say that to me no oh that's exactly who i was thinking I would love to see Bryce Mitchell and Dan Ige. That makes sense. I think that that would be a really, really that fun could... fight. Because Dan Ige could grapple. Yeah. He's like a legit black belt mm-hmm. and with takedowns, takedown defense. But his striking's probably a little bit better than Bryce. I think so. But, but Bryce has power. Bryce's grappling is probably a little better than his. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You know, so if, if he could stop his takedown. I would like but that. that that's, a, that's a matchup I could see them making. I like that for like a main event fight yeah. it's five round fight for that it would be cool but if i'm really my dream fight if i could have one fight of for bryce mitchell Gary i would tone in nope well that would be great yeah but he's not in the ufc all right well i thought you said i would love it if gregor ah uh, that would be at, a good fight at featherweight but gregor and him would be a fun fight that would watch. be really good yeah yeah or gary tonin would be very similar like fun too yeah but i would love to see gregor and Bryce Mitchell. That would be a super fun. And they could both like be like talk about like you know, uh, fishing and you know they show like hiking them in overalls all the time. They're both They're characters. Similar, you know? They're both characters. Yeah, that'd be that'd be a fun fight. Yeah. Um. Then RDA and uh, Moicano. Um. I'm not gonna lie. I took that. We always talk about every fight card. There's one or two fights that you take off when you're watching the fights, and I definitely took off for this one. Not any reason. I mean, it was a good fight. I just, yeah, it's just kind of lost steam. By I was like getting tired. I'm like, I gotta make cocktail or huh? I think I had a gal. Yeah. Um, that was a good time to to have one. But uh, yeah, that one I just kind of took off. Not for any reason. I just you needed one of them a fight card, and that was mine. I was into it. I mean, RDA looked amazing. His mm-hmm. takedowns looked great. Grappling looked really good. It seems like I mean, he he. Everyone always says this is he's fought the hardest schedule. He's yeah. fought everyone at 170 and everyone at 155. The, yeah. the best of the best. And if he can dictate the grappling, he always wins. The guys he uh, struggles with are wrestlers that he can't take down. Like mm-hmm. Colby was a really tough matchup. Um, I forget. There's a couple other wrestlers. But if he can't get the takedown, then he seems to struggle a little bit. Uh, Khabib was a bad matchup but when he gets the takedowns he really fucks people up yeah he's really good yeah i like him but uh Mercano looked really good too because and he took it on short notice yeah, five round fight short notice and in the fifth round everyone was like oh they should have stopped it i thought he maybe won the fifth round yeah he had him, like stumbling at the end of it i thought that was so impressive that he i don't understand why it was a five round fight i don't either really maybe it was supposed to be a main event on a different card but even still you would think if they switched it, I think yeah. that would have been more into that fight if it would have been three rounds, but it was still Me good. Too. It, I mean, that's crazy, especially if someone's taking it short notice, unless it's for a title. I feel like they shouldn't do it five rounds, but it's not fair to the other person. So I get both for five rounds. I get both sides, but um, but yeah, it was good. Yeah, definitely. Then uh, Colby and uh, Masvidal, what'd you think? Um, I went. Did they get the right decision? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um. I mean, it went exactly how I thought. Yeah. I thought he would get the finish in like yeah. the fourth. Yeah. But um, it was crazy, though, because at the end of the fifth, you really saw how much Colby really doesn't like him. Like, he was like just like viciously beating him as like the after they hit the sticks together. It's weird that you think about it when you're watching that you can tell you the person tell. doesn't like because everyone's trying to to get the finish and everyone's, you know, they're all fighters are trying to hurt each other. But. You could tell by his punches that he doesn't yeah, like could, him. That's how violent it was. Yeah. 
such an amazing thing though it's like it doesn't happen a ton where there's like a clear cut like definitely the the best like like a super dominant fighter that no one else can beat like but a then, Whitaker. Yeah, but then like the next best guy is like a super tough fighter that no one else can beat. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like like DC and John Jones. Yes. Like I don't think DC could ever beat John Jones, mm-hmm. but DC like if John Jones didn't exist, he'd be, you know, by far the greatest fighter ever, the right. greatest light heavyweight ever. This is like like Usman is definitely the greatest welterweight ever. I feel like Colby's the second greatest ever. And I mean that I think he's beating George St. Pierre. Yeah. I, I really do. I think he's that good. But I think Usman is, you know, the very best. But just they're in the exact same age at the exact same time. And it happens to be the two best ever. In the same weight class. You know, yeah. like if he was five years older or five years younger, he's going to be a long time champion. Even a little, even like three. Cause you might, yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I mean, like Robbie Lawler or Tyrone Woodley. Like those guys, I mean, they're not even close to Colby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's just, it's unusual when that timing works out like that. So do you think Colby will fight for the title next? No. Well, that's what I was thinking. I, after that fight, I, I was thinking about it, because I always think, like, what's next? And I think they're both in a really weird spot. Because Masvidal just signed a brand new contract, I guess, like, a very lucrative contract. But um, he's coming off three losses in a row, three bad losses in a row. So, but he's sort of like an iconic fighter where he could get into like the super super fights. Like he'd fight like Diaz, uh, you know, Connor, Connor. like people like that and just do like one off super fights, like the BMF league, whatever. So he has a little bit more of a direction where Colby, I don't really know what he will do next. Because I think that they already said that um, Gilbert Burns and Hazmat Chamayev. The winner of that is the number one contender. Either way, it's a semifinal. Mm -hmm. The winner gets a title shot. So that means that they're going to be next. So how long would Colby have to... Maybe he fights the loser of that. Maybe, but that seems Mm -hmm. seems weird, kind of. But I I think that's probably what will happen. Yeah. He's trying to get that Poirier fight, but I don't think... Why would Poirier do that? Right. You know? I'm into it. Yeah, but he could fight, like, Connor's a lot easier than Colby. Yeah. For sure. You know? Yeah, because, I mean, Colby's just a nightmare for anyone. Yeah. I feel like um, like when he, sw- when he left ATT, people were kind of thinking, like, oh, he's just not going to be as good because he doesn't have his training partners. He's just as good. He's just yeah. as good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's, he's absolutely so incredible. Yeah. But, like, I think he's the second best Walter Wade ever. I, I, that sounds crazy because mm-hmm. he wasn't a champ, but he, I think just timing-wise. I know people don't like him. A lot of people don't, but I don't know. I love him. I think he's so entertaining. Yeah, I think, I he's, think he's funny. The fact that he's kind of got that like Connor thing where like, you know, right after a fight, no matter what time of day it is during fight week, he's on point, on point. the entire time. Um, He was, what was he saying to the, that reporter? Which one? Uh, the, the John Morgan? Yeah. Yeah. He says that he, he's like, I'm not answering any questions from you unless you do 10 push ups first you're not a real journalist isn't that yeah he said that during before the fight and then after the fight i guess he got up and was like how do you feel about the fight and he goes give me 10 push-ups he's like 10 push-ups and wouldn't answer him just blast him i'm like oh my god and then the next he goes next question and then some girl was like colby asked a question she's like hi how are you how are you doing but even that like you just finished that fight, you're right there, and he's already bop, 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 like he's. Oh, uh, he doesn't. He doesn't miss like a not a beat. Yeah. Like I don't think he's as like smooth at talking as like Charles San Charles no, or but uh, he's, Connor. But, but the fact that he he's has a little more theatrical. No remorse. Right. He says like vile shit mm-hmm. about people's wives and family. He has no remorse, so it's almost like the shock value. Yeah, makes, makes up. up for the fact that like like Chael Sonnen was almost like you know like a stand-up comedian he's mm-hmm. like jay leno or something yeah like such so articulate and well-spoken and like right you know so good he's and, more theatrical and, and connor sort of was too like his timing mm-hmm. of stuff like who the fuck is that guy that, yeah like those things are a little better but in terms of when you add that shock value to it no one's better than Cole. and he's just more theatrical like that's why people get so mad i'm like i don't know i think it's kind of obvious he's doing a character you know what i mean 
Yeah, but people they, people get upset. Oh, they get so upset. I think he would be like clear cut, easy transition into WWE after if I'm he sure wanted to. I'm sure that's what he's gonna do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he seems like he's doing that when he's talking. He seems yeah. different than anyone else. Any other fighter that even is talking shit doesn't have that aura about him. But he's like, an entertainer. Just like when Connor was having his moment, Connor backed it up. Remember, like when mm-hmm. he was horrible to Aldo, and then he knocked him out really quick. Like Colby backs it up. He just keeps winning. Yeah. You know, I mean, granted, he lost to Usman, but was... they're like a war. And Usman is, I, I mean, the best of yeah. the best. Yeah. You know, so he, he is special. But it was, it was a fun fight. Yeah. Did you guys see Drake bet on Mosby at all? I did see that. I saw that. 275K, right? Drake, you got to know a little bit more about MMA before you start making bets. You know what I think about that, though? I always think like that's like buying $275,000 worth of advertising because yeah. like, that's going to like put him in the news that whole week. Drake, for that. yeah. He doesn't yeah. care about losing that. It, you know, it maybe It's like the same as you making like a, you know, a $50 bet. Yeah, but that, that is a lot of money. True. After the fight, um, Masvidal uh, <laughs> tweeted out at Drake, like, next time you're in Miami, dinner on me. <laughs> <laughs> the least he could do. Um, yeah, and then I saw uh, Colby was talking shit about Drake. He's like, your last album was trash. <laughs> <laughs> Super funny. Yeah. It was funny, too, that Colby and Masvidal are both, like, such big Trump supporters. They're and fighting that was over- kind of like a vi- like, he- Colby was hating on George, saying, like, Donald Trump doesn't even like you. He used you for the Latin vote. He's like, you're, you're Fidel Castro Jr. But Masvidal is like so against anything. Like, cause he was in Cuba. He knows what it was like. Yeah. Or his family was from Cuba. Yeah, they yeah. know how terrible it is. Yeah. So he's like probably more of a Trump supporter than even Colby. Yeah. Colby's like a gimmick. Right. Where Masvidal is like, no, no, no. He's going to prevent it from going to fucking communism. Yeah. He knows the, the, the realization of communism yeah. and that's why he's yeah. it's just a funny beef that they have and he's like have you ever been to the white house <laughs> it was so funny yeah but that the, the fact that like the most hated person ever is like one of their both of them like i really they're into. like fighting over who <laughs> likes them more <laughs> yeah it's funny um so what else anything else um no you got any questions yeah a couple questions yeah let's go uh Someone asked me, oh boy, how legit is Chemayev's wrestling? Okay. Um, well, you I saw think that it's wrestling pretty match. legit, like, because he's had wrestling matches. Mm-hmm. He was on, like, you know, I think trying to be on, like, the Swedish national team, but he didn't, couldn't get the paperwork done right, like, they would, like, in terms of citizenship. So I'm sure he could have been on the Swedish national team. I don't think Sweden's very deep. So he looked like amazing in the matches that I've seen him do against like, you know, Swedish wrestlers. Okay. Because they're not great. Right. It's not, you know, not a very good league. Yeah. So I'm sure he could have been on that team. Had he stayed in Dagestan, like he's, I don't think he's probably like even like a top 10 guy in Russia. You right. Know? But maybe, I mean, but I don't think that Maybe he if you would have stayed there and then focused more on that and had better training partners, maybe, but right. Right, as of his skills. But his, he does have a legit, freestyle wrestling background like he won the swedish nationals mm-hmm. he, he he's competed in freestyle wrestling we're like khabib and islam they always say like how great they're wrestling they didn't wrestle right you know they do they just trained mma they, and uh combat sambo mm-hmm. where this guy actually does come from freestyle wrestling but so i'm sure that his wrestling is really good but it's really irre- irrelevant yeah because what matters is your mma grappling mm-hmm. and that is outstanding for him Right. I'm sure his wrestling is good, but his MMA grappling is, it looks to me like the best in the UFC. Right. But so it's kind of like people like misconstrue that. Like someone I saw, someone was asking, I think there was a little back and forth with um, uh, Islam Makhachev and Jordan Burroughs mm-hmm. saying like they should wrestle each other. I'm like what? Jordan Burroughs is tech falling him in like, seconds yeah like and that's nothing seconds. against and there's nothing against them because if it was in a fight islam would take him down and strangle him yeah it they're two totally different things that's so weird when people don't understand that yeah it's just like a fan i think that's just a 
a fantasy um, hypothetical situation for people that don't really know that much about the sports. Right. Yeah. So that's just it doesn't a fan matter fantasy. how good his wrestling is. His MMA grappling is insane, and he's going to be really you know tough to beat. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm excited for him versus Gilbert Burns. Me too. What do you think's going to happen with that? It's one of those things you don't really know I, until I, you I, see. I think he's kind of going to fuck him up. You think he's going to fuck him up? Yeah. That's I do. crazy. Yeah. But Gilbert Burns is really hard to take down, though. He's yeah. a legit grappler. But his striking looks, like, amazing, too, though. Yeah. But, yeah, it's interesting. And then someone else asked another wrestling question. It was uh, Michigan beating Penn State at the Big Tens. Mm-hmm. Um, did you watch any of that, Zane? I saw uh, Miles Amine beat Aaron Brooks in the finals. Yeah, well, that's what's so crazy about the Big Tens is that if you just place, like if you play sixth in the Big Ten, there's a good chance that you'll be sixth at the Nationals the next week. Mm -hmm. Like no other conference is like that. Like Mm -hmm. if you take fourth in the Mid-American Conference, like you're not even, you're nothing. Okay. But Big Ten, if you're third or fourth in the Big Ten, you're going to be, you know, in the hunt to win the Nationals. I agree. I mean, if you look at, like, the EIWA, like, Yanni's, like, teching right. in the finals. Right, right. So is Vito. Jordan Woods, is like, has won that, like, what, how many times? Four times. Four times, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, like, Michigan beating them at the conference is crazy, amazing. But, like, I'm sure they won't beat them at the Nationals. It's just that, that's just how good that. Oh, this is something players. I wanted to get your opinion on. So yeah. Gable got a forfeit in the finals of the Big Ten. Okay. How do you feel about that as a college wrestler? Um, the guy from Iowa forfeited to him, yes. right? Um, and he's supposed to be pretty good this year. He's definitely really good. I mean, maybe he had some type of little injury, and maybe he was like wanted to save it, save it for the Nationals. I'm sure he wasn't scared of him. I mean, he's definitely going to get fucked up by Gable Stevenson, but he's not scared of him. So I'm sure that he was just probably had like a little, a mild injury. There's like, no, what's, why? Like babying an injury. You know? Yeah. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because especially when you have the national, if it was at the nationals and you forfeited, then, yeah. then you're like, what the fuck are you doing? But the goal isn't to be the Big Ten champion. The goal is to be the national champion. So maybe he wanted to position himself the healthier. Because if he wasn't, you would think almost maybe you want to go against him so you can feel it before, you know? Yeah, but I'm sure there was some type of injury, you know? But uh, like you Zane said, Miles... looks like he doesn't agree with you. It's okay. You don't have to agree with him. No, don't yeah. let Kyle bully you. I mean, I don't agree, but I'm letting Kyle like, continue his point. Okay. Yeah, well, that's my point. Yeah. yeah. So what's your point? The I goal mean, is to win the Nationals, not to win the Big Ten Championship. I mean, I'm also not a college wrestler. Let's get that out of the way. Uh, right, but still. But still, like, even if it's, like, you know, like, in high school, like, I think it just, like, like, these guys, like, now that, like, in college, now that you can make money, right, like, you need to add, like, give people, like, a reason to care. Uh, so, like, this is, like, this Iowa guy's, like, big year. What's his name again? Uh, Cassiope? Tony, yeah, Tony Cassiope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, like, he really came into his own this year. Like, yeah. he won, uh, like, U23s. Yeah, yeah, he's great. So, like, people are really hyping him up. And so, if he's only going to have, like, one match with Gable, you know, like, he could have made this, like, a storyline for himself. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. cut some press out of it. Yeah. I think I'm sure there's some type of injury thing. Like that you know, makes sense. Tom and Terry Brands are his coach. They're not, you know, <laughs> there's no, there's no pussy in those guys. Like they're yeah. just, they're as hard as they get. I'm not saying he's beating Gable Stevenson, but it was for a legitimate reason. I'm sure. Who was your favorite, Tom or Terry? Well, I know Terry a lot better. Um, Terry is my coach for the years, so Terry. But they're pretty similar. But I, I, I've worked with Tom too, at Iowa. But they're, they're great guys. Any nice. stories? Yeah, tons. But any good ones that you yeah. think of off the top? Um, not off the top of my head right now. But uh, yeah, I saw that Miles a me match. That's what won it for. Um, a me match? My, what's his name? Amine. Amine. <laughs> Miles Amine. That match won it for Michigan, right? Because mm-hmm. it was head to head against Brooks, right? Which is crazy. Because I think Miles is like this is like he's like a grad student this year. Oh, he's been there forever. Yeah, he took third at the Olympic. Last Same year, thing right? with Gefeller, I think. Yeah. Caden from uh, get the Cowboys. Well, Alex Marinelli too. Mm-hmm. There's These guys so are many kids that like are like thirty six, years old. Years. They're like thirty years old and still yeah, yeah, wrestling yeah. like well, nineteen point, year olds. It's like the point of diminishing returns. Like we're like ah, uh, 
I don't know if he's going to win. He's getting a little old now. Yeah, <laughs> like that shouldn't be an issue in college, but now yeah. it's almost becoming that. Did you spend five years in college? I spent five, yeah. But now it's like people do like six, seven. And then with COVID, yeah. they got COVID, an extra. You know, yeah, it's ridiculous. Nuts. But uh, yeah, so that was exciting. Um, just that there's, started, that there's that much parody. Like last year, Iowa won the Nationals. This year, if Michigan did, that would be, you know, pretty exciting that there's that much parody within the Big Ten. But um, I'm sure that at the Nationals, Penn State will end up winning it. I agree. When is that? Two weeks. That's fun. I know. I wish I could go. We just have so much shit Where is it? Um, where is it? Mm. Dallas. Or no, Detroit. I believe. Uh, for the Nationals? Yeah. I think it's in Detroit. Yeah, I think I'm Detroit. Sure. That's where uh, Gregor won his Nationals. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I wish they were in New York. Yeah, me too. Um, do we have an Am I the Assholes in? We do. We do. Um, one second. I was trying to figure out where I could find the Nationals. Where's that? It's Detroit. Every year? No. But this year. This year. Hmm. Alrighty, here we go. This uh, this am I the asshole? Uh, I won't want to say it's too controversial, but <laughs> am I the asshole for being too close to my ex husband? <laughs> the title's a little odd, but okay. I uh, okay. So six years ago, I got divorced from my now ex husband. There was no drama that led to this. We simply realized we were no longer happy or in love, so it was gonna be a clean break mature but they have a daughter who is now 11 neither of them wanted to lose full custody and they didn't want to raise her without the other person in their life hashtag Mm co-parenting so when they sold their house they used the money to buy a semi-detached house and they had a construction company in store install a door between them construction company (laughs) (laughs) install a door which actually brings down the value of your house both houses in general. Okay, so they're committed. So they're, it's a financial commitment. Um, many people were asking them why or how this was even going to work, but uh, they said it was strictly for their daughter's use in case there was an emergency, uh, fire, medical emergency, something wrong. Um, she has a bedroom in each house, which is kind of sick. Uh, <laughs> so last year... Her ex-husband married his girlfriend of three years, uh, a woman that she's actually friends with, mm-hmm. the ex-wife. Um, she was even a guest at the wedding. Um, and everyone is okay with this uh, arrangement except for the ex-wife's now boyfriend okay. of two years. Okay. He sa- she says, he understood the arrangement entering into the relationship, and while he said it was a bit weird... He never protested, and all seemed well. Things are getting more serious, and we've been discussing moving in together, and he has made it clear that he wants me to move as he doesn't want to live next door to my ex-husband. I understand that, but told him that wouldn't be happening as my daughter had to come first, and our arrangement gave her a stable upbringing. I love this. and I'm. You do? I, well, I love this story. This is just okay. tiny dick energy. Huh? Tiny dick energy. All right. <laughs> He got upset with me and asked me how he was supposed to be a father to my daughter when she already had a dad and he was literally a wall away. I won't lie, this took me by surprise as I had no idea he wanted to be a quote-unquote father to her. I told him gently but firmly that he wasn't her father, that she already had one, and that even her father's wife didn't try to be a mother. Instead, she called her by her name. I told him if he wants some kind of familial title, he could be an uncle but I wouldn't give him permission to take her father's title when he's very much involved in her life. (laughs) He told me if I loved him, I'd move for him, and despite me trying to tell him I do love him, he isn't listening. Am I the asshole in this? Okay. Can I take my... Go ahead. Okay. So, I don't think she's an asshole at all. I think what her and her ex-husband are doing, it's very unconventional. I've seen this before that couples that have like a two family home and they have it. And then that way their kids can go back and forth and it's just a little bit easier and it's definitely unconventional, but I think that's probably like one of the healthier things for the kid. Now for the couple that splits up when they go on to date and find other people, it's definitely going to be tough. But also I think if you 
choose to have a kid and you get divorced, me personally, I would think that the kid would come first and your opportunity, once you have a kid, your opportunity to like have an easier pool of people to date is not a priority anymore. And you kind of lose that privilege once you have a kid. So I think that I'm not saying you have to do it this way, but I think that's like if everyone's in the same understanding of what's going on, I think it's a it, it's a really good thing. It makes sense. I understand how the people dating the couple, the couple that broke up, how it would be difficult. I wouldn't want to date someone that was in that situation, but I would know that ahead of time. Just like, you know, just like you make a decision if someone you want to date someone that has a kid or has has been married before. That's your decision. And you need to know that going into it. But I understand that not everyone's into it. But if you're going to be into it, you have to be cool. You can't really say like, hey, you know, you got to do this. I'm sure he knew the situation and can't really wait, wait two years to, to change. I don't think she's an asshole. I think it sucks for her that if she really likes him and it doesn't work out. But that's the risk you take when you enter this type of situation. It's good for the kid, but obviously it makes your dating life way harder. Right. And it probably sucks for her because if her ex-husband got married and found a girl that's okay with the whole situation, then she probably assumes even more that any guy should be okay with it because she sees it. Mm. For It worked for her, her ex-husband. It shouldn't work for her. I think it's really good for the kid. Um, it definitely sucks for them, but that's the decision you make when you get divorced after having kids. Yeah. You don't what do you think? Um I don't know. The only thing that I th- I think is an asshole is the boyfriend when he said, "Well, how am I supposed to be the father? Why would you think you're going to be the father if that's the father weird. was still in play?" That's really weird. Like that's what I always say. Like I could see myself like if some if you had a kid and the the husband or the father was not in the picture in any way, shape, or form. Like didn't exist, and his his parents didn't exist. It was just you. There's either no, like he passed away or just ran or just yeah, had no contact. No, no one. Then I could be like, all right, yeah, I'll take take you over, help you help be the kid's the father dad. figure. Yeah, yeah. But like, if the kid's involved, if they're clearly involved, you have to take like not like a step back. You have to be like just there, just be like a nice guy, mm-hmm. like you would to anyone else. But you can't be like, uh, you know giving him even really advice or you know teaching him things be like no the, the dad is gonna want to do that yeah especially if they're in their life and they're there all right. the time so that's the only part of that story that i think's ridiculous yeah the but, boyfriend seems a little weird she, yeah, she kind of. just get someone cooler but then like that living situation does suck though because it sucks for everyone involved kind of except maybe the kid yeah because you're never really comfortable maybe you know? i mean I don't think either of us would be comfortable in that situation, but I'm sure some people are fine with it. Yeah. Maybe if you marry someone that has a kid or before or something, you know? Yeah. Maybe. Or maybe it's only until, I mean, he said the daughter was 11 too. Maybe until she gets older, you know? Yeah. Cause 11 is still pretty young where you, young. you really want both people around for all the, like yeah, as so much as you can. It's still a lot of time, right? Like, like it's kind eight, of like eight um, more years, seven, eight more years. Yeah. That's a lot. We decide. I feel like, People think yeah. like, oh, that's it's too hard. But I don't know. I think when you decide to have a kid, you get your priorities are come last. It's definitely the kids' priorities. Yeah. But um, as long as you guys are, if you can do it together and you're both happy, if you're living like that and you're both miserable, then it's not good for the kid. But it seems like they have a good arrangement. It kind of is like Courtney Kardashian and Scott Disick. Yeah. Like they're like always together and at each other's houses all the time. Sometimes like they'll like. Scott just go like sleep over at her house and people are like, that's so weird. What about their dating? She's like, well, I want him to like be able to wake up and get his kids ready for school. Sometimes there's like four kids and I'm sure their house is plenty big enough. But then when they start dating someone else, it gets too hard, like going on family vacations together. It's a, oh. it's uncomfortable. I think people always like in the beginning of like a dating stage, you're so, in, so like, you know, on cloud Agreeable. nine. Yeah, everything's fun. Oh, yeah, this isn't a big deal. Isn't it? And then when things really start to sink in and get serious, then things bother you, right. but whether you have kids or not. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I don't think she's an asshole. She needs a new boyfriend. Yeah, I probably need a new boyfriend. It's not going to work out, Mm-mm. I don't think. Um, what else? Anything? Got anything else? I think we're good. No, that, that's about it. All right. We have another traveling weekend ahead of us. Mm-hmm. It's going to be kind of fun. We were... Um, you're doing a like a appearance with uh Derek Moneyberg. Yeah, I'm excited in yeah, Vegas. So we'll get we'll get more into that next week, but yeah. that's gonna be cool. 
Um, thanks for listening. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.